Years ago, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was among us, I was at his table speaking to him about a Father's Day lecture that I had given. And in that lecture, I compared the oft-repeated prayer of the Muslims called the Al-Fatiha with the oft-repeated prayer of the Christians, which is called the Lord's Prayer. And as I was delineating my understanding of these two great prayers, he said to me, quote, Yes, brother, and you may sit as the father over the house when I am gone. I didn't fully understand the meaning of his words, but when he said, you may sit as the father, he was telling me that when he was gone, that I would sit in his seat with the authority and the power of his seat over a house. And that house was not the tiny little nation of Islam. That house represented 40 million or more black people in America and 4 billion, 400 million black, brown, and red people over our planet, and it even included the Caucasian as well. So I'm going to speak to you today as a father. I will speak to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, but I will speak to the President of the United States and the government of the United States of America. I will speak to the kings and the rulers of the world. I will speak to the Pope and to the religious leaders because you have to know that your time has come and so has ours. desire to guide you and to warn us of things that are coming that you must try to prepare yourselves for, for we are absolutely living in the change of worlds. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad once said, I am the richest man alive because God has given to me a nation. And he was not just speaking of the original people in America. He was speaking of that nation. Because in the end, which is right now, there won't be many nations. There will only be one nation under God. All other kings, listen, all other rulers, soon all other governments, all other flags will be done away with. And those who survive what is coming, notice, those who survive what is coming, you will be living in that which is called the hereafter. And the hereafter means here, here, on this earth, after the destruction of the power of this present wicked world to dominate the lives of the people of our planet. To all my friends, that Allah has blessed me to make over the years to my Christian friends, my Christian pastors, to my nationalist brothers and sisters, to Muslims all over the world, and to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, I have been before you as a student 
of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for now 54 years. No. No. Just listen. In 1981, after being underground for 41 months, gathering people to help in the rebuilding of Elijah Muhammad's work, we had our first Savior's Day of this new dispensation at the Auditorium Theater here in Chicago. And at that time, I mentioned to the world that the man, Elijah Muhammad, that we all thought was dead, was very, very much alive. When I made that statement, I knew there would be a falling away from me because I and we, some of us, had seen a body. And there was a death certificate, there was a funeral, there was a burial. Yet, the minister was saying to the world that Elijah Muhammad was indeed alive. Some thought that the minister was an incredible liar that I had lost my mind and some who were in the ministry under my leadership walked away and many of my nationalist friends walked away from me because they could not understand how I could stand before the world and say that a man that the world believed was dead was actually alive. One of my very dear friends, a lawyer who had been with me from the beginning of my effort to rebuild his work, Attorney Lou Myers, came to my house after that lecture. And we went to a little restaurant and he said, Brother, why did you say that? I know you're not insane, but why did you say that? He raised a good question. And I said to him, brother, there are some truths that one must say, regardless of whether the people believe or disbelieve. It was my burden to suffer the consequences of the people's disbelief until further proof could be made known to them that the man that they all thought was dead was very much alive. For 29 years now, I have maintained that position. It's interesting that the 29th surah of the Quran is called Al-Ankabut, the spider. And it says, do men think that they will be left alone on saying, we believe and will not be tried while others were tried before you? Well, that was a trial for those who walked with me. That was a trial for me because many, though walking with me, walked timid. They didn't walk heavy. Because Farrakhan, we don't know, this man may have lost it. Well, after 29 years, the work of those who condemned me as a liar has waned. And by the grace of Allah, our work will continue to grow. So I will talk to you today in a way that you have never heard me before. And the things that I will say to you today, some of you will believe. And some of you, unfortunately, will disbelieve. 
Some of you will come closer to me and others will depart from me, but all of this is in the hands of Allah. For the things that I say today are the things that I must say to tell you what is coming, to help to prepare you for what is coming, and to tell you something about myself. A brother that you've been looking at, many of you for years, I don't talk about myself. But today, I have to say something to you about me that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has already said to me time and time again, things that I don't talk about, but today I have to say these things, and your belief or your disbelief is not on me. My duty is not to...